folks! My Snake Week special is, you guessed it, Snakes of Ka- Oh. Shark Week? F thought it was Snake Week. Dyslexia strikes again. Well, I, uh, already wrote this script, so here we go. Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Snakes are limbless, predatory lizards. On Earth, they are a highly successful clade, with as many as 4,000 species throughout all continents but Antarctica. Most modern snake clades are only found widespread success after the end Cretaceous extinction, and are therefore relatively recent arrivals to Chimere. Other more basal snakes, such as the Madsoids, along with legless rhynchocephalians, temnospondyls, and heterotherms, occupy the snake niche throughout most realms beyond the known world, although some modern clades like colubrids and boids have found appreciable numbers in Kyrule. The known world, however, is a refuge for snakes. Most of their competition was wiped out in the dynastic extinction 15 million years ago, and many totally endemic snakes can be found in significant populations and diversity. The colubrid subfamily Dorsocarninae, the ridgeback snakes, are found throughout the known world and are by far the most abundant and diverse clade. As many as 80 species can be found throughout the known world alone, and many more in the continents beyond. They are related to the subfamily which includes garter, keelback, and grass snakes. Although their exact origin is unknown, they were among the first animals harvested after the dynastic extinction and diversified rapidly. They are ecological generalists, being found in fossorial, arboreal, and semi-aquatic niches. Some also hunt in leaf litter, and one genus is found on the Housie Prairie. They are mostly non-venomous, killing small game and invertebrates with a bite, though a few species have rear mouth fangs that can deliver sufficient venom to kill a chimera. The common ridgeback is comfortable in mangroves, forests, and swamps and has the broadest range of any Chimeran snake, with abundant populations in the Cyritic wetlands, swamps of Arvel, and northern Picardia, although they are found anywhere that people settle. Though occasionally a fisher, they primarily hunt rodents and multiduperculates up to the size of a rat. Their venom isn't strong enough to kill a person, but children can be in danger. Even so, they are not aggressive toward people, and most cultures appreciate them around as a free pest control though they aren't as successful as cats. Chimeran cobras are the most abundant venomous snakes in the known world. They aren't in the genus Naja, so aren't technically cobras, but they possess hoods and are highly venomous. Their ancestry is traced to the harvest of Southeast Asia 12 million years ago. With as much time as they have been present, the genus Pseudonaga has been quite successful. Their harvest was prompted by the arrival of titanosaurs and the two clades have demonstrated a surprisingly parallel evolution. In an effort to deter predators, hatchling titanosaurs of the genus Cuparotitan have hoods that can inflate with air from their diverticula paired with hissing, matching the threat of common cobras. Evidence of this mimicry on behalf of the young titans is ongoing and comes in the form of young spitting as approaching predators. Chimeran cobras only began spitting venom with the arrival of Homo erectus, not unlike the evolution of this trait in several independent lineages of true spitting cobras on Earth. Of course, titan spit is harmless, but enough baboons, coatis, ferrets, common monkeys, and chimerans have been blinded by spitting cobras that they deter potential threats. Although most snakes are from these earliest lineages and have held their niches and from the Miocene to modern times, there are some more recent snakes that have established themselves in this competitive ecosystem, despite the older clades having a home court advantage. The Housie Taipan, for example, is one of the many venomous snakes on the prairie, possesses the most potent venom of any Chimerian snake, 
and is certainly the strongest in recent harvests, sharing a common ancestor with other taipans in Papua and Australia. There are many semi-aquatic freshwater snakes in Chimere, but only one is a true viper, the cottonmouth, which came during the interrupted harvest that has since become one of the most common snakes in the known world, ranging throughout the wetlands of both continents and a small population in northern Picardia, having established themselves amongst the many species of ridgeback that occupy this niche. Kajar is within Chimere, known to be the endemic home of many other North American snakes, such as garters, milk snakes, and rattlers. The fry pan viper is a relatively small viper. Their name comes from the sizzling sound they make as a warning by rubbing serrated scales along either side. They like to live in gaps in stone, which unfortunately means they are drawn to live in settlements. Their preferred prey is small rodents, but their venom is potent enough to kill a person. Though their venom is not as strong as the venom of taipans or cobras, frypan vipers are responsible for well over half of chimerans killed by snake bites for one simple reason. Aggression. They will remain silent until something approaches and are small enough to be overlooked. Unlike most snakes, which hiss or rattle to deter and only strike when further pressed, Frypan vipers often give a warning sizzle, then strike regardless, sometimes while actively hissing. If they are in an enclosed space and unable to sizzle, they might strike without any warning at all. To make matters worse, they often take refuge on docks or ships, following rodent prey on board. Because of this, their range has exploded from the small region in Western Crescent to the entirety of the known world ports. Though fortunately for the Picardian and Southern Kaleen, their cold tolerance is poor and culling efforts have exterminated these populations. Constrictors of the Boad family have been in Chimere since the Oligocene harvest, although they didn't reach large sizes until after the dynastic extinction. Their ability to swallow prey much larger than themselves has allowed them to compete with the dominant Metsoids, and they are found in most tropical regions the world over. In the known world, the heaviest snake is the ceritic anaconda Eunectes ceridensis. The largest individuals can reach 25 feet in length and the heart of the wetlands, and it's not unusual to find females weighing in excess of 500 pounds. Pythons are also quite successful in Chimere. One of the known world's longest snakes is the Arveleth python. Originally assumed to be in subspecies of the reticulated python, it has since proven to be a true member of the genus python, and only resembles the reticulated python through convergence in size. Their length has been recorded at a maximum of 32 feet, though their weight is around half that of the shorter yet much more robust ceritic anaconda, at a maximum of 200 pounds. The Rainbow Serpent of the Arveleth Lowland Rainforests is often considered the largest snake in the known world. While this is true in general terms of averages, their maximum weight falls short of the heaviest ceritic anaconda that weighed almost half a ton, and shorter than the longest Arveleth pythons. The Rainbow Serpent is the last of the Madsoid snakes of the known world. These snakes are among the most successful in Chimera as a whole, but they have not recolonized the known world in the aftermath of the dynastic extinction. Madsoids are notable for being very basal clade of snakes, being non-venomous, sometimes constricting prey, but lacking the jaw flexibility to swallow large game, and are not dedicated constrictors like boas and pythons. Many wetlands of the eastern continent see these snakes as apex predators grappling large semi-aquatic mammals and feeding on organs and other tender portions, using serrated teeth to rapidly portion out their prey. The rainbow serpent lacks these levels of specialization, usually hunting small game but occasionally tackling larger prey with soft bellies that they can pull apart. The name comes from their striking iridescence, especially when wet, shining as a bright rainbow while sunning on high branches. In the wetlands, mangroves, and seagrass meadows of central Kairul, a madsoid is one of the apex predators. 
This great serpent can reach a staggering 60 feet in length, although 45 to 50 is more common. They are called the Dreamtime Serpent, a reference to Australian folklore, and linking them to the Rainbow Serpent of the Known World. They have a striking iridescence as well. They mostly hunt marine mammals grazing in the meadows. Though they have a degree of cranial kinesis and can swallow some prey whole, they prefer larger game that their hooked, deep-rooted teeth allow them to pull apart into the abdomen, feeding on soft organs not unlike the macropredatory elasmosaurs such as the Xanatel. This generally wasteful feeding strategy leaves a lot for scavengers to subsist on, making them a keystone species. Though they do compete with Kudajaku, who arrived in the habitat around 2 million years ago, they require a lot less food and often get their fill of soft innards before the larger Kudajaku arrives, as Kudajaku aren't able to detect prey by taste or scent underwater and must rely on scent from above if they are to scavenge. The largest snake thus far accounted for the, by the Great Library or Assembly is found in the vast marine horsetail forests of the Permian continent and other polar regions. This marine serpent is called Jormungandr by the Assembly. They primarily hunt marine dicynodonts. Their cranial kinesis allows them to swallow smaller prey species whole. Unlike the Dreamtime Serpent, their teeth are serrated and blade-like, and they portion out prey too big to swallow with slicing tugs as they constrict, rather than specializing in soft parts. They are often classified as madsoids, like the Dreamtime Serpent, though their endothermic metabolism and fully live-bearing young certainly sets them apart. They don't do well in open water, where their body plan of mosasaurs and giant elasmosaurs is proven far more successful in hydrodynamic, but when slinking through underwater forests and meadows to the south, the body plan of Jormungandr is much more efficient and less likely to get entangled. They don't have stabilizing fins, but like beluga whales, they can flare out at valno muscles to offer stability. Like mosasaurs, they hunt by taste in the water, which allows them to close in before hunting by sight. There are other endothermic members of this clade, which have allowed them to repopulate temperate and subpolar waters that other snakes would rather avoid. Some are even terrestrial, inhabiting some of the subpolar islands, though Jormungandr is strictly marine. They may not be apex predators of the open oceans, and have plenty of mosasaurs and plesiosaurs to fear, though within their domain, Jormungandr is king. Snakes are feared and hated by many Chimeran cultures. Considering they are the deadliest animals in the known world in terms of number, with several thousand deaths every year, this is not an unfounded rivalry. Even so, there are notable exceptions. Common Ridgebacks, as mentioned earlier, are well regarded for their calm temperament and efficiency as mousers and ratters. The Arveleth regard the Rainbow Serpent with near-universal reverence. Skin Changers, who take their form, are high priests of many woodland settlements. To the Shu, the Venom of the Spitting Cobra and Taipan are seen as a challenge. They are the favored familiars of prairie witches, and spitters are a sacred emblem to their mounted archers. The crowned vipers, rattlesnakes of Miocene origin, are sacred to the Picardiant. They get their name from the horns over each eye in larger species. They have a greater tolerance for cold than most snakes, which is why they are the only viper common in Picardia. When combining the calm temperament with the reverence with which Picardian regard them, bites are extremely rare. Their venom is very potent, however, and considering one must consistently harass them in order to get a bite, many Picardian regard their victims with disappointment and an assumption that they were at fault. Crowned vipers are associated with healing. The venom of most vipers causes bleeding. However, Crowned vipers instead cause blood to solidify after a few seconds of exposure. In a bite that can lead to coagulation throughout the circulatory system, an undoubtedly horrible way to die, 
but in controlled doses, when mixed with a variety of herbs and antibacterial molds, the Picardians have found this potion paste called Dalagoga to stop bleeding even from deep wounds after, while also staving off infection. Delagoga proved invaluable in the Three Spears, allowing injured warriors to swiftly patch up their wounds, which were critical to their skirmishing tactics. There are three species. The Root Viper has the widest range, being found throughout much of lowland Picardia and the southern islands. Though not an aquatic species, they are most comfortable in wetlands and swimming overseas in search of new territory, which has led to their wide range. They are usually around three feet long. It is this species which gave the Viper clan their name. The witch Jean Goga, who founded the clan, has a root viper familiar named Ogu. The nominative crowned viper is the largest species and mostly concentrated to the highlands. Their green hide helps them hide from dinosaurs in this territory, which are much more common than the lowland, where red spots of the root viper might stand out. Though far from the largest venomous snake in Chimera at a maximum of 8 feet, with a weight of up to 23 pounds, they are certainly the heaviest by a substantial margin. Smallest and rarest is the Red Rattler Berti. They are extremely sacred to the Picardiant, and only found in the territory of the Viper Clan. Their venom is said to be especially potent and most useful for making Dalagoga. Some naturalists assume they are only a regional color morph of the root viper, but as taking specimens for study is forbidden, the question of their exact placement will likely go unanswered. The importance of snakes in both cultures and ecosystems of Chimere cannot be overstated. Though often overlooked and reviled, they play a critical role in local ecology. Cheers to Lucas for sponsoring this episode. I've always liked snakes, and this episode was a special trip down memory lane. Back when I was in high school, I volunteered at our local zoo and accompanied the handlers to events like birthdays or graduations to expose kids to wildlife. Given my allergies to pretty much all things furry, I mostly worked with the reptiles. The snakes were always my favorite, not only for their relaxed temperament, but for the regularity with which I got to help people overcome their initial misconceptions, fear or disgust, and appreciate these beautiful and often peaceful animals up close. Many snakes can be extremely dangerous, and in many ways, cases conflict with unfortunate inevitability, but as with all wildlife, giving them space and respect can go a long way in minimizing danger both for us and our scaly friends. I also want to say that next week's episode will be in a new format, possibly the week after as well. In order to make time for more writing, they will be shorter episodes than my usual level of art. On Patreon, I've put up a Q&A where I will be taking questions for at least one of these episode slots, maybe two if I get a lot of questions. I'll be closing that toward the end of July, so if you're only seeing this now, you've got time to go and comment if you're already a patron or join now to get your questions in. Stay fantastic, everyone. Thanks again to Lucas, and thank you for watching. Cheers, folks!